Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about sickle cell anemia. It is a autosomal recessive disorder and the basic problem is in the point mutation in the gene which is responsible for globin chain synthesis and it is a qualitative defect. Remember in thalassemia also there is a problem of globin chain synthesis, but that is a quantitative and here it is qualitative defect is there. Now, what is the problem? We have a hemoglobin S in this in the beta chain in the sixth position glutamate is replaced by valine. Similarly, we have one more <coughs> hemoglobin C again in the beta chain in the sixth position glutamate is replaced by lysine and we have a HBE where in the beta chain in the 26th position glutamate is being replaced by again lysine. So, what you can see everywhere it is a glutamate which is being replaced by either valine or lysine, but even the chain involved is again beta chain. Now, it may be homozygous in homozygous we write as H B S S or it may be heterozygous we write as H B A S. As far as heterozygous are concerned, <coughs> they are resistant to plasmodium falciparum, falciparum okay. and 10 percent of the blacks they usually have a heterozygous type of sickle cell anemia. Now, what is the pathophysiology? pathophysiology that is homozygous sickle cell HP this one HP SS. So, sickle cell it is de any condition which lead to hypoxia or when it is deoxygenated hemoglobin and this hemoglobin they get aggregated and they polymerize and once the hemoglobin has been polymerized. So, RBC assumes a sickle shape, sickle shape is like this. Okay. Now, what are the factors which can precipitate this sickling? The precipitating factor are first of all hypoxia. So, patient going to high altitude they are more likely to suffer from all these problem. Anything weekly to dehydration that is why sickle cell patients should always keep them hydrated and they should always avoid going to very high hilly areas. Acidosis that is why it is very common in diabetic patient having DKA sickling is very common because sickling itself uh, is not only perceived by acidosis, but in DKA marked dehydration is also there and very high grade fever or very cold temperature also precipitate sickling. Now, what is the outcome of this sickling? As these they are shape distorted, so outcome is they have extra vascular hemolytic anemia, but point to be noted it is intrinsic defect. Second thing is stickiness, increased stickiness. What happened is that this is the blood vessel and these are the sickle cells. 
they tend to adhere to each other they are more sticky to each other as they become more sticky they are going to block the micro circulation so due to blockage of micro circulation there can be ischemia or infarct of any organ in the body so let's see how patient come to us patient may come with acute clinical feature may be acute or chronic in the acute because of increased stickiness patient may have mesenteric infarct and that lead to severe pain abdomen it lead to severe patient may have transient ischemic attack myocardial infarction renal papillary necrosis this also lead to severe pain in the loins blindness can occur spontaneous abortion can occur due to placental infarction priapism it is a painful erection of the male genitalia this is due to prostatic venous plexus infarction acute chest syndrome in this patient has severe pain abdo pain chest fever shortness of breath breathing difficulty hypoxia and why it happen it happen either due, due to pneumonia pneumonia could be due to streptococcus or viral or it could be mycoplasma or second is it could be bony in fact bony in fact okay so in acute chest syndrome if you take the chest x ray you get infiltrates you get lot of in and acute chest syndrome is a very the most common cause of death in young adults or young people the next problem is dactylitis this dactylitis is also known as hand foot syndrome this is classically seen in children between 6 month to 2 years and it is uncommon after the age of 2 years and what happened this thing <clears throat> there is swelling in the fingers or toes and there may be infarction of metacarpals and metatarsals then the next problem <coughs> what patient can come with the acute problem is osteomyelitis this is classically salmonella osteomyelitis patient may have septic arthritis and this septic arthritis is due to staphylococcus
So, in that way we can say patients are prone to infection may be in the bone, may be lungs or anywhere else also. Now, not only patient can have acute presentation, patient also have chronic presentation, anemia because of why extra vascular hemolytic anemia and of course, since there are no uh, auto antibody are involved, so it is a type of Coombs negative hemolytic anemia. Gallstone and they are usually pigment gallstone. Ulcers are very common in the leg areas, leg ulcers are very common in these patients. Patient may have autosplenectomy because of repeated infarction in the spleen. So, usually in a child above 10 years in sickle cell, spleen is not palpable. But one thing is very, uh, you should be very cautious about it. Here we have an extra vascular hemolytic anemia. Most of the condition where we have extra vascular hemolytic anemia like heredity spherocytosis spleen is palpable, but this is an exception where spleen is not palpable. Now, there are few conditions where there can be sudden fall of hemoglobin occurs and there are two important reasons for that. One is aplastic crisis and this is very common after parvo virus infection and in this condition retic count is reduced. Other is sequestration crisis, here the retic count is normal or increase. Okay. Now, let us uh, see how to investigate this case. The best initial test is is peripheral blood film. In the peripheral blood film, of course, we see sickle cells, which are very obvious, like this. What I already told you. We can also see <coughs> hovel jolly bodies. These are nuclear fragmentation. Nuclear chromatin fragmentation. And for the initial screening tests, we can go for sodium meta bisulfide for screening. What it is done that a drop is put in the slide of sodium meta bisulfide and it lead to it create hypoxia and hypoxia induces sickling. So, it is a screening test, but most confirmatory test is hemoglobin electrophoresis. What we get in trait that is HBAS, you get HBS about 40 to 45 percent and HBA hemoglobin A you get 55 to 65 percent point to be noted that in this SBS concentration does not go above 45 or 50 percent. That is why in these patient normally patient does not have much feature of any of these feature what I mentioned for sickle cell are not there. Because to have the feature of sickle cell the SBS concentration should be above 60 percent. That is why those who are 
those who are a trait they do not have much of the manifestation. But in sickle cell HBS is 90 to 95 percent and HBF is 5 to 10 percent that is why they have lot of manifestation. But one thing point to be noted in these patients there is no HBA there is no adult hemoglobin HBF is there in 5 to 10 percent case uh, in the percentage wise. What else we get it in CBC complete blood count increased TLC and increased platelet P for platelet count thrombocytosis is there and what we get in x-ray if you do the x-ray of vertebra you get fish mouth vertebra. And if you see do the x-ray of the lateral view of skull, you get hair on and appearance. For prenatal diagnosis, you have to go for fetal DNA analysis and you look for the point mutation. Now, how to treat a case of sickle cell? patient come with any painful crisis, so you have to use opioids. We have to maintain the good hydration. Folic acid should be given regularly because they have lot of hemolysis going on. Infection should be treated because these patients are prone to various infection I discussed. And of course, in severe anemia, we may have to go for blood transfusion. We use hydroxyurea. The purpose of hydroxyurea, it increases HBF level and HBF resist sickling. So, we want more and more HBF should be there, so that sickling is reduced. Now, sickle cell treat all these what we discussed was for sickle cell anemia, sickle cell trait what we have learned that in sickle cell trait HBS is 40 to 45 percent, A is 50 to 55 to 65 percent and just to remind you pa these patients are resistant to plasmodium falciparum infection this we have studied earlier. Now, they are heterozygous, the peripheral blood film is normal point to be noted. Clinically, there is no anemia, but then what a problem did they have? They usually have problem in the kidney, renal problem. What a problem is? First of all, decrease ability of the tubules to concentrate the urine. That is why they have a fixed specific gravity of the urine, what we call as isos thin urea. S these patients may have some time hematuria and they have a recurrent UTI is the problem. So, this, this patient they have more of a renal problem rather than the hematological problem. Okay. So, this is all about sickle cell anemia. Thank you very much.